Oprah Winfrey said recently in a social media post that wholeness is the new wellness. For those of you who've been watching me or listening to me for a while, you've probably heard me talk about feeling whole and complete. So basically what Oprah's talking about. When you experience a rise in your frequency resonance or vibration rate, you start to experience an unexpected level of wholeness. What does it mean to feel whole? Why is it the foundation of liberation? What can change in your life when you start to experience it? Today, we're going to discuss how wholeness affects every aspect of wellness and how to experience more wholeness. And after the discussion, we get to the most important part of this episode. The group frequency calibration associated with this episode is where the frequency work happens and where change actually occurs. So be sure to listen to that. Without releasing distortion patterns targeted by the GFC, the change you want will be more difficult to attain because you haven't addressed the root of the issue. If you like this episode, please subscribe by clicking on the red button. My name is Karen Chong, and today in Mastering Your World Through Frequencies, we're discussing wholeness is the new wellness. I check my Instagram yeah. every now and then, yeah. and I noticed a post by Oprah Winfrey, mm -hmm. and she was suggesting that wholeness is the new wellness. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not the first time I've heard that, mm -hmm. because I've heard you talking plenty about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm guessing she kind of maybe means the same thing as you, but like, what do you mean when you say wholeness, first of all, yeah. what is that, is the new wellness? Yeah, from my perspective, Wholeness is a state that we don't even know that we're striving towards when we are in our spiritual journey. At least I didn't know that's what I was striving towards. I just knew at the beginning that I was striving towards something that was a creator that was outside of me. And I didn't know what that was. And people would talk about awakening and enlightenment and all these wonderful things and like, you know, being able to journey with their consciousness. And that sounded really cool. But it's funny, as I sort of... Um, matured or progressed along my spiritual journey, I realized that all that stuff seems amazing. But truly, in order to be happy, fulfilled, satisfied, like the best version of me, it was about feeling complete and whole within myself. Like not needing something outside of me to feel happy and complete. You know, like that um, if I just knew that training, if I could reach this level of my spirituality, if I could have that new fill in the blank, right? That that completeness was the foundation of that sort of happiness, the not needing something outside of me. It's like a higher level of satisfaction that I didn't even know that I was looking for. And satisfaction is kind of like a, a term I'm coming up with because it's really not just satisfaction. It's like, it's so much more profound than that because it's ultimately like a form of freedom. Because when you're whole like that, you don't need anything external from you. You recognize your wholeness. Like you are complete. You are, what I mean by complete is, even in your quote unquote imperfection, you're complete in your connection with pure source. And so you recognize on some level that you, like you as infinite indestructible consciousness having the unique expression that is human, that is messy and flawed and all that stuff. But that's not a problem. It's just part of that expression. Mm, as you're talking, I'm hearing like you are enough. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. It's you don't need to keep striving to be something that yeah. you think you need to be. You're enough. How about making peace with that yeah. and finding out how much enough is? Is, yes. that, is that the same kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, the same kind of thing. But it's not, and it's it's funny because we often will feel like we're not enough. Mm. Like, you know, that was something I dealt with. You know, I always wanted to be the best at everything. Mm -hmm. My parents rewarded me for being at the best at everything. And so I felt like if I could be the best, then I'd be enough. But even when I was the best, it still wasn't enough. You know, yeah. so I'd met the criteria, but it wasn't enough. So as you say, it's about enoughness and also this feeling of it's okay how I am. Does mm. that make sense? Like, it's like, because in that, what, what I'm describing, it's like if I meet this criterion, then I'll be enough. But it never felt that way. Yeah. 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 
So it's not only like feeling like enough, it's like it's feeling like enough irrespective of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Totally. It yeah. doesn't matter what you're doing. Yeah. I think we've discussed this previously as well. Yeah. That for a long time for myself, I used to think if I did something noble, yeah, you know, as a job or just even as a project, yeah. then it would make me more spiritual. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, you know, I've met the criteria or I'm almost there now. Yeah. You know, oh, all this reaching and reaching and reaching. And then I think somewhere along the line it changed and it became, well, if I recognize that the whole point of my existence is just to keep on plugging away at being the best version of myself, yeah. knowing that I'm connected to pure source, yeah. then that's magical enough. I could be yeah. sweeping the streets. Yeah. And that's fine. If I know inside that I'm greater than anything I can do outside. Yes. Is, is that the same kind of thing? Exactly. Because what you're talking about is a being in this state. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to me, that's what you're describing. It's like really the expression that you have of what you quote unquote do is what you can choose in this lifetime. And there are myriad flavors and colors of what that could look like. But ultimately, all of that is fueled by what you're describing, which is this being state, this best version of yourself internally, aware of your connection to pure source. Because no one's like necessarily judging like who you are, like meaning how you behave all the time, what you're, how, like the resonance that you're holding, how you conduct yourself, what you choose to say, what you don't choose to say. Like, yes, you can have external judgment of that in a particular moment, but it, no one else is there but you all the time. Yeah. Right. And so if you're all if your focus is on clarifying or raising your vibration or your frequency resonance, being aware of yourself, being vigilant. And that's not just of your resonance, but it's like how consistent are you through your behavior? Right? And we talked about this a lot in Master of Momentum, the six core essentials. Mm -hmm. Right. It's this consistency of like through all of you. Then this is something that's really important because no one's there but you noticing that and you start to, as you rise in your resonance, become, it's just for your beingness. So your beingness informs your doingness. Your doingness is simply a reflection of your being. Yeah. And it's really kind of amazing because then everything becomes kind of glorious because it, it's okay that it's messy. It's okay that you messed up. It's okay that you, oh man, next time it would be better if I said it like this, or I need to apologize here. It's not necessarily about that. It's about you striving in that, or that's not even striving. It's about like um, wanting to be the best expression of you because mm -hmm. your frequency resonance demands it. Totally get it. I was about to say that. It, it, it's like a switch happens. And instead of doing it for outside um, accolades, yeah, suddenly it becomes, I want to do this for me. Yeah. I mean, I want to be the best for me. Exactly. And I want to set these standards for me, yes, you know, and and it's the impact that that has on the collective is unknown. Yes, and it doesn't matter. Yes, because this is my journey. Yes, with pure source, and I want to see how glorious that can be. So, you know, that's the driving force for me when I'm doing it. Yeah, and I'm sure some folk might say that's completely selfish, but <laughs> no. Well, it is if you look at it only from the perspective of the little as self, which is that we're separate. But if you have the perspective, or I should say, and if you have the perspective of the big S self, the more you individually do that, the ripple effect into the oneness is huge. Because what you're doing is you're setting your resonance higher and higher. And your accountability, as you said, is not to the external. It's to the highest version of yourself, not just as a human, but you as infinite indestructible consciousness, which is this glorious, magnificent beingness that you are expressing through the physicalness that is you. And how amazing can you be as the human expression of that? And the more you're like that, the more like the resonance rises and the others are impacted by that because they're like, wow, that feels really good. I want to be near that person because it's pretty amazing. And then it sort of ripples out. Now, do you know the exact consequence of all of that ripple effect? No, and you don't really need to because all you're focused on, or not all, to a large degree, what you're focused on is your accountability to your own frequency resonance. Totally. In every relationship that I have, it's the same. Yes. You know, I'm having these relationships, but I'm always watching me as the human. Yeah. <laughs> and how it wants to express itself within that relationship. Yeah. And it, it's it's almost a moment where 
I'm guessing a person would say, thank you. Yeah. Previously, when I heard that, oh, that's just a whole pile of wishy-washy, yeah. you know, guru-worshipping, yeah. sorry for the judgment, but, yeah. you know, and now, actually, I get the significance of it because in that moment, uh, always holding myself accountable and I'm in relationship, I'm looking and thinking, I'm not going to be better here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the trigger? And mm -hmm. that's stopping me from wanting to let this go. Mm -hmm. So, And I'm guessing, because I want to come back to what we proceed, this is part of the wellness, yes. right? Because, yes. I mean, wellness is important. If you haven't got it, yeah. What's the point? True. Right? Yes. And a lot of wellness, it's funny. To me, it always comes down to vibration level or frequency resonance. Mm -hmm. So in order to get to the level where you feel this beingness that we're talking about, that is very, you know, when I started in my spiritual journey, I found this kind of discussion really difficult because I'd be like, I don't know what they're talking about. Like, I don't get it. Like, I'm, I'm trying to get to this beingness thing that they keep talking about. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to do that. So could someone please just give me a freaking checklist and then I'll do the checklist and then maybe I can get to the thing that they're talking about. <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally understand. Yeah. Right? So I just wanted, so I, to all of you who are listening and watching and it's frustrating, I get it. And what will happen is that it's not a thinking thing. It's really about raising your vibration. So how do you do that? So just in a nutshell, and I'll get back to your point yeah. about like what is wholeness, how does wholeness impact wellness and why is it the new wellness and why is it so important yeah okay but just for people who are new okay you're like okay well how do i get to being it all comes down to your vibrational level or your frequency resonance it all comes down to how high is that because when you start to rise in your frequency resonance the mind becomes less important i'm not demonizing the mind the mind is a very helpful tool but you realize that there's a greater aspect to you than just your thoughts, than just your emotions. Mm -hmm. There, You can have space from those things. Yeah. So you can start to feel the expansiveness of who you truly are, which is you as infinite indestructible consciousness. You only start to feel that when your vibration level rises. So how do you do that? Well, there's a number of ways. The fastest way that I've found is to do frequency work because what it does is it releases the distortion patterns, or what I call distortion patterns, that keep you it lower in your frequency vibration. Yeah. Okay. So once you start to release those, and if you don't know how to do that, what to do, I recommend watching episode, I think it's 176, where we talk about all about how frequency work works. Mm -hmm. And also the episode on the most important tool in your toolkit, which is about confirming the removal of distortion, which is the most important the tool, yep. huge tool. And uh, we also talk about, um, there's another episode where we talk about how to accelerate yourself the most, where we talk about the six core essentials. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, all of these tools are extremely important, and that's how you can raise your frequency resonance for anybody who's new who's watching. Okay, so to get back to your original question, which is how, what is how wholeness, and how does it like dovetail into wellness? To me, wellness is a broad term, which is so many things because it's physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. To me, that's what wellness is. It's this feeling of being your best, being at your best, being optimized, okay? That's my perception of wellness. Like if you're truly embodying wellness in the best way possible. If you start to feel that wholeness from the level that we're talking about, this being state, because your resonance is high enough, you start to interact with or experience the physical, mental, emotional in a very different way. Yep. You don't judge it. You don't beat yourself up about it. You're not a victim anymore. You start to feel more empowered even in the challenge, the messiness, the, geez, I wish I'd done that differently, right? Because it shifts the way you perceive those things and therefore your relationship to who you are and how you feel and the world changes, which changes how you feel about your wellness, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. Yeah. That's how. Oh, yeah. well, I could say that. No, I'm sorry. There's no way I could have said it as clearly as that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would say for me to use probably an overused phrase, I have learned to love myself more by yeah. doing the frequency work and having that distance in that space mm -hmm. than any other I guess, uh, therapy that I've ever tried before. Mm -hmm. 
because the space, as you talk about, mm -hmm. the space is so important from the mind. From the mean? mind, yeah. yeah. To be able to create that space and to feel something other and to see oneself without the judgment and the criticism and to actually be able to laugh mm -hmm. at how silly and, and human-y yeah. that I am or anybody is. Because I've also found that when I can do it for myself, I just laugh at others. They don't irritate me either. It's like, oh, yeah, I know that one. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, I do that too. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and it's not, it's funny because how you're describing it, you recognize that in you, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's true and you can laugh, you know, at your own weaknesses and how it shows and you're like, wow, yeah, I do, I totally, it's different, but I, I uh -huh. do that, I have... I, I walk that road. From. Yeah. <laughs> right? Totally. And so it shifts your relationship with everything. And I also feel like in this wholeness, that not enoughness that you keyed in on at the beginning, that scarcity mm -hmm. of I'm not enough, I don't have enough mm -hmm. resolves. And if you can imagine, if you feel like you have enough and that you are enough, well, then what would you choose to do? Mm -hmm. What would you choose to experience? How would you choose to be in the world? If you're not from that space of lack, everything changes, including your relationship to wellness, so to speak. Yeah. 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 And that very question, what would you choose to do? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like I wouldn't choose because the choice is to keep on doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Because the feeling is so amazing. Yeah. To the point where, like you say, when your frequency resonance drops, that horrible unwell and whole feeling returns it's like Ew. okay now i know the difference i'm just gonna work my little ass off to get back up to that wholeness and wellness feeling again exactly <laughs> and when you said i wouldn't do i would do nothing do you mean absolutely nothing or i wouldn't change anything no I, yeah good point um i guess it's i'm not looking to do something ah. it's more like as i'm progressing and keeping on finding more and releasing things tend to just pop in and it's yeah. like, yeah, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. yeah, I'm happy to do that because clearly I need to be right yeah. now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it puts you more in a flow state. Yeah. 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 And I feel like I, I agree with you. It puts it's for me especially, um, because you've always been more flowy than me by a good margin. I feel Way like too flowy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, my issue has been too rigid, like too linear, too um, too adhesive has it, like I've made a plan, it's gonna be a plan. If everyone, if we don't do, if we don't keep to the plan, it's stressful, terrible, the world's gonna end. I don't know what's gonna happen, yeah. something bad. Okay. I can hardly remember that, Karen. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know. But it's really lovely when you get to this place of wholeness. And for all I'm talking to all you control freaks out there, okay? You know who you are. When you get to this place of wholeness, the seeking stops. Mm -hmm. So you can be in flow. You can be like, sure, all right, let's do that now. It's okay. It doesn't freak you out that you didn't accomplish everything on your list or in your plan or in whatever it is that you need to do. Yeah. So it's a, it's a different kind of freedom. Yeah. Which is transcends. It's funny because for those of us who are control freaks, you know, it, we can be ruled by our to-do list. Like if I just finish the to-do list, then it'll be okay. Right? But then you finish the to-do to -do list and then there's like more on the to-do list. More, exactly. Right? And it like never bloody ends. <laughs> but when you get to this level of beingness, you can be like, okay, well, it's incomplete. It's all right that it's incomplete. And I've gotten to what I've got to today. And you can shift and what really has to be priority comes in. And you do that. It's funny. It gives you a kind of fluidity and freedom um, that I wasn't anticipating having. I didn't look for it. It wasn't because I was quite satisfied with my to-do list and trying to get through all of them. Yeah. Right? That was like my little like, let's achieve that. You know, but um, for me, it's a kind of freedom that I didn't anticipate from this wholeness, mm -hmm. which is really difficult to describe because... It's um, it surprised me, actually, you know, how it's like because wholeness and freedom don't sound like the same thing. No, but they are actually. Yeah, they can, I call it liberation. Yeah, liberation. Yeah, yeah, because you, I feel liberated from that bind yeah. on the mind. Yes, you know? it's like I came along with a great big pair of scissors and went. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll make my own tie to yeah. you when I need you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Which, Because like you said, it's not about um, trying to annihilate the mind. No. It's like you recognize it as an, a tool and you get to choose when you pick up the tool. Yeah. As opposed to being run by its stories, its assumptions, mm -hmm. its lack. It's always comparing to other things. When you realize that you are whole, 
the mind really just just become a tool and you're like okay well that's great that you're yapping away at me right now but not now mm -hmm. and it's really lovely so I, I really love the fact that Oprah was saying that uh, wholeness is the new wellness because it's true yeah because as we start to embody wholeness everything in life changes around us yeah I don't think we can sum this conversation up any better than just that it really is about wholeness being the new wellness and the way to get there yes is to do the work. Yes. Right? Totally. And for those of you who want to raise your frequency resonance so that you can come into this beingness to experience this wholeness, then I strongly recommend that you check out the GFC that's associated with this episode. And if you've liked this episode, then please click the like button and share it with a friend. We're about to start the group frequency calibration, or GFC, where we actually do the frequency work and where change is catalyzed. To get to the GFC, click on the square that'll appear to the right or the link in the description below. It's time to bring in a new experience, a new consciousness, and a new world. Let's rise together.